Hello, welcome back to my haunted library. It's Regina. Today I'm here with a tag and I'm a little late coming to this one, but this is a tag put together by John over at Books of Blood and Jason from Jason's Weird Reads. This is called the Halloween Creature Feature Reading Extravaganza. I'm going to put the uh, hashtag right here. It is running October 1st to October 31st and uh, Jason and John are co-hosting it. I'm going to put their links to their videos below. So I wanted to join in on the fun because so many of my friends on HorrorTube are doing this and I ha haven't done a TBR for a while and I, I thought it was funny because Jason also mentioned this in, in one of his videos. It might have been one for this one but I don't remember about how he um, you know doesn't really like to do TBRs because he fails at them and I can feel your pain Jason but I thought I would at least try because this was fun pulling these books from my shelf. I tried to do um, like shop in my own closet, so to speak. I only bought one book for this, and it, but it was something I was interested in, so I didn't mind. So it was fun to go through my shelves and see if I could meet the very specific criteria for this challenge. So here we go. Only a woman can break his spell. Read a vampire novel written by a female author. So for this one, instead of just going for the obvious and grabbing an Anne Rice book, I went through all my shelves and tried to find a vampire novel written by a woman. I found several actually, but this one was not so uh, long because I have a lot of books here that I have to get through and I'm getting a little bit of a late start. And this is Night Prayers by P.D. Cassick. She is an author I've certainly heard a lot about, but I've never read anything that she's written. I picked this up in a thrift shop I don't know, probably in the last year or so. So here's my excuse. I can finally read this. Sometimes you just need a little push in that direction and it's not that long and uh, it looks pretty good. So let's see what this book is about. And let me know in the comments below if you've read this. Uh, meet Allison Garrett, 30 something, biological clock ticking, perpetually unlucky in life and love. Unlucky enough to wake up in a seedy motel room after a three-day binge, dumped by yet another guy, and alone again. Oh, yes. And now she's a vampire. That sounds really good. I love the premise. I love the sleazy kind of premise. And uh, I always love books about women in trouble. You know, I can relate on a certain level. Even a man who is pure in heart. Read a werewolf novel with the word wolf or moon in the title. See what I mean? These are very specific. So I went through my shelf and I'm like, there's no way I'm going to find this. And I thought I might even skip this one. I just read The Wolfen and New Moon last month. So I'm like, okay, I don't think I have one, but you know, you never know what you're going to find on your own shelves. This is called Moon Dance, a novel of terror by S.P. Somtow. It has a wolf on the front and I thought this has to be about a werewolf and it is. So this book I bought in a used bookstore a few months ago and it's one of those that I didn't realize until I got it home and opened it that it's signed by the author. When werewolf meets shaman between the gold hungry settlers and the U.S. cavalry then blood will fly and lives will be forever changed. Wow this looks very involved and really good. Has anyone read this? I have a few of his other books, but I don't think I've ever read them. So this is a nice signed copy and it's always great when that happens. One of these days, perhaps I'll find like a signed Stephen King copy. You never know. To die, to be truly dead, that must be glorious. Read a book featuring a dead or undead character. Okay, I might be cheating with this one, but I'm assuming there's going to be some kind of haunted in this. And that is Halloween Party by R.L. Stein. I wanted to choose a book that was going to be a quick read and I just love this pumpkin. Fear Street, Where Your Worst Nightmares Live. This is from the Fear Street series. The invitation arrived in a black bordered envelope that was delivered by the beautiful and mysterious transfer student. I, I'm, this is coming back to me. I'm pretty sure I read this before. Uh, the inside showed a coffin with the inscription reserved for you. Perfect for an all night Halloween party in an old house on Fear Street. The party was well underway when the lights went out. That's to be expected at a Halloween party, but when the lights came back on, there was a boy on the floor with a knife in his back. 
Just a Halloween prank? Maybe. Maybe not. Now the guests' trick-or-treating has turned to terror, and it looks like someone's idea of a party game is murder. I'm pretty sure I've read this before. It's all coming back to me, but I'm going to look at this again and, you know, just give it another quick read. And how can I resist that incredible pumpkin cover, jack-o'-lantern cover? It's so awesome. It's in the tree. It's coming. Read a book featuring a cryptozoological creature, Sasquatch Yeti, Chupacabra, Loch Ness Monster. So I was pretty sure I wasn't going to find that specific type of story on my shelves, but I did find this one and I'm pretty sure that this will qualify. I hope anyway. It's a book I've been wanting to read for a while and that is The Jersey Devil by Hunter Shea. There aren't a lot of things written about The Jersey Devil and there aren't many films that I'm aware of, but I have a Jersey Devil story, which I'll share with you, but let's just see what this one says. The legend lives. Everyone knows the legend of the Jersey Devil. Do they? Some believe it is an abomination of nature, a hybrid winged beast from hell that stalks the pine barrens of southern New Jersey searching for prey. Other believe it is, others believe it is a hoax, a campfire story designed to scare children, but one man knows the truth. This looks like a really fun read. I've heard a lot about this author, but I don't think I've ever read anything by him, so I'm going to dig into this. I'm kind of tempted to start with that one first. So what I might do is just start with the, the short books first and then work my way into Moon Dance, which I probably won't finish by the end of October. And then I'll just keep reading it. I think that's going to be my plan because I could spend the entire month just reading Moon Dance because it looks like that type of book. That is not dead, which can eternal lie. And with strange eon, even death may die. Read a book of cosmic or Lovecraftian horror written by a person of color. That's very specific, and I could not find that on my shelf, but I did buy a Kindle book called The Good House by Tanana Reeve Du, who I'm familiar with from a really great documentary on Shudder that I watched called Horror Noir, which is about uh, the black experience in horror films. Really excellent documentary. If you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend it. So that's reading something completely new for me, a new author, and I'm very excited to dig in. I not sure exactly the specifics of this book, but I, I got it from a list of like Lovecraftian themed horror stories. So hopefully it will uh, fit the bill. And if not, I don't really think it matters. So those are my choices for the Halloween creature feature reading extravaganza. I love the name of that tag. It's very cool. And I thought I would end this uh, video today telling a little story about my experience with the Jersey Devil. Now I kid you not, this is a true story. I have a witness because my husband was with me when it happened. We both experienced it and he is not someone like me who gets uh, caught up in like stories of the supernatural. He's a very, very logical person with a scientific mind. So opposites do attract, I guess, but here's what happened. I live very close to the Pine Barrens. I, I live on the Delaware River. I can see New Jersey from my house. And every time you drive to the beach, you go through the Pine Barrens and it's just like a two lane blacktop just goes straight through. And it's just like sandy ground, cedar creeks and pine trees and a lot of stories attached to it. It kind of has a reputation of being a little backwoods, shall I say. We were driving, this was back in the early 80s. He's a fan of country music. We were uh, driving out to way out into the Pine Barrens to this Grange Hall where a musical act that he really wanted to see was playing. And being a good girlfriend, I went along for the ride and we had this little VW Bug that was our first car. So we're driving through the Pine Barrens at night. It was very, very scary, very dark. I had no idea where this place was. I mean, it really was just like a Grange Hall in the middle of nowhere. And it was just packed with all kinds of people who had come out to see this this band play and it was like a bluegrass band. So it's really late at night after the concert, we're driving back from this Grange Hall. The road, when I say road, it's like a one lane dirt road with sand, you know, going back through this pine forest. We were going around a curve like that and the headlights hit it and it froze and it was this gray, like, like a wolf or coyote beast type thing, like a huge dog. Huge gray dog is what I saw with like fangs. My husband claims he saw wings on it. Now, 
I don't know about that. As we were driving away from it, I remember saying, I think that we just saw the Jersey Devil. Now, it could have been something else. It could have been a coyote or a wolf or a very large dog. Now, it didn't really quite look like a dog to me, but I'll never forget seeing this beast in the middle of the Pine Barrens. It was pretty scary and uh, never forgot it. So uh, that's all I have for today. Let me know in the comments below if you're participating in this uh, read along and if you've read any of these books, also let me know that. And if you've ever had experience with the Jersey Devil, I would love to hear your thoughts about that. So uh, that's all I have for today. Thanks for stopping by my haunted library and I'll see you soon. Bye.